as I was thinking about Thanksgiving this week, I come up with this idea that being thankful can actually change your life. Do you believe that? The grateful attitude we need can change every aspect of our lives. Let me tell you a little story. Mr. Beaverson told me last Sunday night he knows a young man that was in a terrible car accident. Mentally, physically, is challenged in everything he does. But is thankful to be here. Is thankful to be that little light to speak with people and to help them in their struggles. I'll tell you another little story. Where I work, we're forced to produce more and more and more and more and more with less and less and less resources. This week we were asked to ship out of that company more than I've ever seen go out of there. And two years ago, there would have been six, five, six, maybe seven people. This year, there was one in me. And I'm a half, guys. Okay. And it's hard to be thankful when every minute of every day, you're pushed, you're pushed, you're pushed, you're rushed, you're rushed, you're rushed. <clears throat> and you get home and you just want to relax. And that same scenario follows you. Have you, have, you guys know where I'm talking about here? Have you ever been there? You're asked to do more and more and more all the time with less. And it's hard to have a grateful attitude in all we do. But God has told us, in everything, give thanks. In everything. Regardless what we see today, regardless of what we feel like today, God's Word tells us to give thanks. There was an elderly man living in Phoenix that caught his son in New York and said to him, I hate to ruin your day, but I have to tell you that your mother and I are divorcing after 45 years. 45 years of misery is enough. The day before Thanksgiving, he called his son. His son frantically called his sister, who exploded on the phone and said, No way! This is not happening. She picked up the phone. She called her dad in Phoenix and immediately said to her father, Stop what you're doing. This is not happening. My brother and I will be on a plane. We will be at your home tomorrow. Don't do anything. <coughs> the dad hung up his phone and looked to his wife and he said, Okay, honey, the kids are coming home for Thanksgiving and we don't have to pay the tickets. <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? But he was thankful that his children were coming home. Last Thursday, many of us gathered with family and sat down and ate meals and watched football, got all excited about everything around us. And the Thanksgiving holiday is meant just for that, to be with family, to rejoice, to have fun, to be thankful. The Thanksgiving holiday gives us the perfect opportunity to begin to transform ourselves, our way of thinking, and live lives of joy and gratitude. That's before you go shopping Black Friday morning. 
That's crazy what you see on the news, isn't it? I don't know how folks four or five hours before that were all sitting around a table holding hands, loving one another, and then go out to a store, knock each other down and get crazy over stuff. Alan Perkins tells us this, a thankful spirit is one of the key distinguishing marks of a Christian. It sets us apart from the world. It makes us different. Do you know when you accept Christ, you change. You become a different person in His eyes. It might take a while for things inside you to start clicking. It might take a while, some trials, some errors, to develop that Christian you want so bad to be. But that's okay. Because it sets us apart from the world. It makes us different. Psalms Chapter 118, verses 1 through 8, tells us this. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, His love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love endures forever. In my anguish, I cried to the Lord, and He answered by setting me free. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I will look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in let me say that again. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Men will let you down, guys. People will let you down. God will never, ever fail you. Let's pray. Father God, this morning, we thank you for these words. We thank you for this scripture, Father God. This strength in knowing that we are to trust in You and in You alone, Father God. This morning, Lord, we give You praise and we give You glory for that. And we thank You for Jesus coming and everything He done for each of us and on the cross, Lord. This morning, as we look towards this next holiday season of Christmas, we remember Christ. And we thank you for his birth and we thank you for his life. And we ask now, Father God, that these words that are shared this morning will be pleasing to you. We pray that your Holy Spirit be here and will reveal himself to us by understanding of your word and by touching our hearts. Lord, just be with us now as we continue to look to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. There are benefits in having a grateful spirit. Why do you think being a thankful person is so important? Why do you think? All week long at work, we rush, 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 rush. Wednesday, 4 o'clock hit. Everybody was like, oh. Now we can go have fun. Now we can be thankful. Now we can have happiness. Now we can have joy. How many of us base our everyday experiences on our joy level? <laughs> we all do. If I walk out to my car after work and it's got a flat tire 
and my battery's dead. Uh, I might even kick a tire or two. There goes my day. Right? Am I alone there? Don't we all do that? We challenge our level of happiness on what we deal with. This morning, some of you, if I would ask every one of you, how happy are you today on 1 to 10? Some of you might say, I'm a 2 at best. Things in your life aren't where you want them. Things are happening all around you. It's confusing. And what is happening is challenging your joy level. It's challenging your attitude. God has caused us asked us to walk above what we see, what we feel, to be challenged by His Word, to be joyful always, to be thankful always. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7 tells us this, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote this while he was sitting in jail. He wrote these encouraging words while he was in prison. Now guys, prisons in the first century were anything like today. They did not have a cot and a toilet and watch TV. It didn't happen. Most of the time prisons were either a dungeon or a cave, and it was cold, damp, and nasty. <laughs> but yet he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. <laughs> Challenging words. Challenging words. A grateful attitude, a happy personality, improves our witness for Christ. Having a pleasant attitude of joy all about you definitely helps when you're working with people. What did we learn just a minute ago? People will let you down. Okay? When you're working with somebody and you expect them to pull their share and do their work, and they don't do it. We get frustrated, don't we? And how do we show that? Do we go to the break room and say, well, you know. Or do we help them? Do we share our joy with them? Do we ask, is there something I can help you with? I noticed you're just not yourself today. I noticed you're just not doing quite as good today. Or do we allow that negativity to wash over us and have the attitude, if they're not going to do it, I'm not neither. We're called to be an example. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 10 through 12 tells us this. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world, to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that 
though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day He visits us. Though they accuse you of doing wrong, don't give up. Don't give up. Keep trucking. Keep working. Because your good deeds will glorify God. Being a grateful person will also enhance your relationships. Your relationship with your spouse, with your children, with your family will change once you become grateful for them. I know there's folks who, who have funny feelings about family members who don't understand why people do what they do. Try thanking God for that. Here's an example. Husband and wife are married the first year. The wife gets a cold. Not feeling the best. Husband says, what can I do, honey? Do you want me to call the doctor? Can I set an appointment for you? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? How can I help? Year number five. Wife gets a cold. Husband comes home and says, What, laundry's not done? What's the matter with the kids? Year number 25. We got 25 coming up this year. Wife's not feeling well. Husband doesn't even notice. Huh? Doesn't that happen? We forget to be grateful to those who are closest to us. Every single person is important, guys. Every single person in your family today is important for you being who you are. And we need to be thankful for them. We need to stop all this stuff and begin to love one another. Romans chapter 1 verses 8 through 10 tells us this. First I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being reported all over the world. God whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his son is my witness how constantly I remember you. I remember you in my prayers at all times. And I pray that now at last, by God's will, the way may be opened for me to come to you. Paul made sure and thanked all the folks in every church he visited. Even if they did not accept his message of faith, he wrote them letters and thanked them for what was going. Expressing thanks to one another isn't always easy. It can be a struggle. But yet God has asked us to do. God has asked us to listen to folks. When someone tells me that might not be a good idea, I wouldn't do that. I try to listen. Because they've probably already walked down that road and is trying to help me not make the same mistakes they made. To love one another to encourage one another means we listen to one another. And we thank God for each and every one of them. Don't let life 
be, you guys. Jesus has given us his son. God has given us his son, Jesus. So we will have strength and authority as we walk in this earth. But we need to do that with joy and with gratefulness. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you for everyone who came out to this place, Lord. We thank you that this church is here and is a light to this community, Father God. We pray this morning, Lord, that these words will touch our hearts. That these words will perhaps change our way of thinking and will encourage us and give us the tools we need to depart from this place and be that different person you have asked us to be. Father God, this morning we lay down our personal feelings and we ask your Holy Spirit to give us the strength we need to go our way today. Lord, as we depart from this place, I pray for safety for everyone and their families, Lord. And I ask that you prepare us for worship this evening. Father God, just be with us until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Folks, you are dismissed. Thank you.